Hey folks, your OS Reviews, you're watching our video first look and a quick review of the eMeet Office Core M1. This is an intelligent Bluetooth enabled conference speaker. Uh, so essentially it offers six omnidirectional microphones and the design is actually kind of similar to something like the Amazon Echo Dot. It's this a cylinder and you can pop it onto the center of a desk and then if you are running your own small business, if you are in a larger conference, uh, then everyone can talk uh, regardless of where they're sitting into the speaker which will be connected to your phone and then of course the person on the other side can hear everyone a lot more easily. So it could be a very valuable uh, gadget to pick up for businesses as well as for maybe schools, organizations, or if you are just someone who wants a better uh, experience just for calling people and uh, it can also be used as a Bluetooth speaker for music. Um, the pricing though is a little bit steep. It retails for 250 bucks and it's on sale on Amazon right now for 175. That's still a little bit expensive. Um, again, considering that the you know, Echo Dot, which even though it's a very different product, uh, you know, retails for 50. So there is a difference there. Its biggest competitors would be pre-existing kind of conference speakers and uh, you know, larger and bulkier older models that we've seen in the past uh, in a lot of businesses. But this is again, the smallest and sleekest solution yet. So it gives a very high end uh, kind of appearance. So you can see the packaging on the front here and on the back, it just has some basic info. There are actually companion apps available for iOS and Android, but they're uh, slightly more in beta status or not quite uh, completed at the moment. So if we take a quick look at some of the branding on the on the uh, back here, you can see it has 360 degree microphones that covers a wide array and it also uses voice IA, kind of a form of uh, filtering and kind of AI to make the sound uh, you know, crisper and uh, more natural for voices. And it features a 5,200 milliamp hour capacity battery, which can also be used as a power bank uh, when you're on the go, which is pretty cool. It, it uh, again, gives you up to 12 hours of listening time and talk time. Lifting up the box, we have just the uh, M1 right on top. We'll take a closer look at its design and of course functionality in a moment. But down below, there are a few interesting accessories. You get a hard shell carrying case that kind of matches the design of the M1. And there's also kind of a thank you card. Inside the carrying case, uh, there's also a strap on the top. We have access to a standard micro USB cable, which is used for charging, and it takes less than two hours to completely charge. It uses Bluetooth version 4.1, so it has a fairly generous connection range between the speaker and the smartphone. Um, so anyways, setting this off to the side, we take a quick look at the design of the N1 first. Again, it does feel very premium, as you would expect out of uh, hardware that retails for over $200. Um, the entire thing is crafted out of a machined uh, aluminum, so it does feel surprisingly hefty. Uh, the outer ring here illuminates just like on the Echo Dot, and there's actually multiple sectors of LEDs. What that means is if you are in a conference, you know, if someone is talking on par one particular direction, it's going to detect that, and that section of the ring will illuminate to give you a visual indicator of you know what part of the microphone has been activated and what parts are being silenced. So it's pretty intelligent as far as sensing that. And you can see kind of uh, this is also where the microphones are uh, located beneath these grills. And then the speaker itself goes out on the bottom here so that if you set it on a surface, it's going to amplify the sound and fill up the voice of your caller uh, in the room uh, pretty well. The bottom here also features a rubber feet and a bit of branding information. Along the sides, we have access to the dedicated power switch. You can tap and hold for uh, additional three seconds to enter the pairing mode, and you would simply pair it like any other Bluetooth speaker with your phone. And then in here, we also have a full-size USB port. This is used for the power bank function, where you can use this as a power bank to charge your smartphone when you're on the go. And there's also the micro USB port for charging the device itself. On the top, we have the remaining controls, including an additional kind of pairing key. Although again, as aforementioned, when you first boot it up, it's so going to enter the pairing mode automatically. You can also connect this by USB. So if you don't want to use wireless Bluetooth, you can use uh, micro USB to connect it to your phone. Additionally, there are volume controls. There's a mute switch for the microphone to disable that. And there's also an answer slash uh, answer reject phone call key on the front. So these keys are all fairly tactile and responsive. They have a nice kind of tactile action to them when you're tapping on it. And if we kind of power it on and show you guys the initial boot sequence, you'll see that it's going to be voice prompt. 
Welcome to UZ Meet M1. Connect to your device by USB or Bluetooth. Once paired, we can also adjust the volume controls, and you can see that there are corresponding lights that uh, will tell you visually, you know, if the volume is going up or going down. So it is fairly intelligent as far as uh, how all the ergonomics are thought out, which again is expected from a relatively uh, kind of expensive. Uh, Bluetooth peripheral. On the back here, again, this is where the sound is outputted, and as a whole, it does a good job, again, especially for voices. It doesn't have too much bass, so if you're using it just for music, then that's not the intent. Um, and although it does output music decently, again, it's going to do best in terms of uh, producing, you know, uh, podcasts as well as the people just talking. And then again, when you're setting it on a hard surface, that's where the sound is able to kind of amplify and reflect off the back and uh, kind of fill up the room without too many problems. Problems. So let's do a sample, I guess, uh, audio clip right now, and this is what it sounds like when connected to a phone using Bluetooth. Hey folks, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback look at the hardware of the HTC Dream, also branded as the T-Mobile G1 here in the United States. This phone was released almost a decade ago, and it was the first commercially available Android smartphone back in 2008. The history of this phone is actually quite fascinating. In July of 2005, Google acquired Android INC, a company at the time which was owned by Andy Rubin. And of course, in 2017, there is much hype surrounding the Essential phone, again by Andy Rubin. So again, we can turn down the volume, we can turn it up again, and then tapping on the uh, kind of phone call key also pauses the audio if you're playing it through, uh, let's say, a, uh, a source such as YouTube or your own audio library. You can also tap on this to uh, automatically start uh, Google Now and uh, other intelligent AI kind of launchers and uh, that will automatically start searching through things and this will act as a microphone for voice search. As a demo, let's tap on the microphone key. This is a test of the voice recognition capabilities of the M1. So we can see that it's actually pretty accurate. It does a good job in our testing, and that's because the microphones of the M1 are, again, extremely precise. They're designed, again, just for voices, and it works well also in loud environments because it does have active kind of cancellation. It's intelligent because it knows if you're talking in this direction to activate this mic and then use these to cancel out kind of the remaining directions. Uh, so as a result, if you're using this for phone calls, it does produce a highly, uh, you know, precise and uh, high quality hi-fi results in our testing when we were doing a few sample calls earlier. Uh, of course, it's also dependent on your phone. So if your reception quality is bad, uh, you know, or if you know the phone is in a low signal area, it's going to not do quite as well since it's basically just connected to your device. But um, it is a lot better in terms of overall microphone quality than the mic that's likely located on your smartphone, um, especially for conference call situations where you have a group of people and that uh, need to be talking into the speaker at once. And the fact that it automatically knows you know, who's talking and activating what part of the microphone is also a very neat trick. With newer Android phones, it also supports kind of reading back of answers and text if you are using it kind of as an AI assistant. Um, obviously, the phone contains the brains, but it's also very similar to something like the Amazon Alexa you know, or the Echo or Echo Dot um, in that regard. So, for instance, What is planet Earth? According to Wikipedia, Earth is the third planet from the sun and the only object in the universe known to harbor life. So in that demonstration, we can see how, again, it basically answers your questions just like Amazon Alexa would on something like the Echo, um, again, when you're connected to an Android phone, for instance. So very interesting. You can also activate it with Siri, of course, with iOS, um, and indeed, it becomes more than just a traditional speaker uh, with the right kind of software integration with your phone. Um, next, we're going to do actually a sample, uh, real kind of sound clip uh, for music playback. We heard speech earlier, but let's say you want to use it for playing back a few tracks. So uh, let's see you know, how well it does uh, with that.
All right, so in that quick audio sample, you guys could uh, hear that the quality of the music is actually pretty good. It does a nice job in terms of having clarity of sound, both in mids and highs. Um, and overall, the sound is quite balanced. But again, it's lacking in bass, which is expected since the emphasis with the Emeet M1 is still going to be with voice. Uh, and that's uh, going to be you know, classified as having uh, you know, voices that sound natural and uh, not overly booming, but at the same time clear and easy to understand. So while playing back music as a traditional Bluetooth speaker works, again, it's not its forte. Next, let's try the uh, power bank function of the unit just to show that it works. It's fairly simple. Um, it's a nice, I guess, extra trick if you are traveling and you don't have any uh, juice left on your phone. And you can see that plugging it in, uh, the charging process will begin kind of automatically on on your device. Um, it's not a lightning fast charger, it's not Qualcomm quick charge enabled, but it supports 5 volt 1 amp output and that means it will charge up uh, you know, a regular smartphone in roughly two hours if it has a 3000 milliamp hour capacity battery. It's not going to be great for larger devices like an Apple iPad, but overall speeds are acceptable and with 5200 milliamp hours you do get roughly, you know, rough, roughly two charges or so on a, on a phone if it's completely depleted. Um, otherwise, you can see that when it's plugged in, kind of Bluetooth is also kind of deactivated because it can use wired connection mode uh, with your phone, and that allows you to, uh, you know, also it will also process kind of the sound in addition to, of course, microphone, just like a connected speaker uh, in this mode. So it works pretty well. You can also see that the uh, power key here is actually illuminated, so there's quite a bit of attention to detail. And you can see that uh, the ring here is red because I've deactivated the microphone. I can tap on this again to uh, have the mic uh, come back. And of course, when you're done with it, you can just simply tap on the power off key. So that's been the eMeet M1, a pretty interesting product. It's by no means reinventing the wheel, even in conference speakers for businesses, there are uh, more established pre-existing brands uh, by companies such as, let's say, Jabra, uh, Cisco, uh, so on and so forth. But those are bulkier, they're larger, they're stationary, they don't come with a rechargeable battery, and they don't look nearly as sleek or elegant as this. Uh, granted, the price point is still a little high, but at least e Meet is trying to kind of modernize the look and design of a business conference speaker. Um, it's also pretty clever because it's not only business to business. Consumers can also pick it up uh, for their data, uh, practical daily use. Uh, it makes sense as a conference speaker when you have multiple people, maybe for family conferencing, for Skypes, uh, for FaceTime, all of those applications will work since it's uh, just connected to your phone. And it works all right as a uh, music playback speaker as well. It's got an intelligent array of six omnidirectional microphones, which is quite clever. I like its design. I like the way that it feels. And of course, its performance is also outstanding for voice. Uh, with that being said, I still think it's a little bit pricey for what it is, and perhaps if you're not quite as uh, discerning when it comes to audio quality per se, or voice quality in this case, something like the Amazon uh, you know, Echo or Echo Dot uh, can save you a little bit of cash. Uh, but at the same time, if you do want the best audio experience, you want those uh, noise-canceling microphones uh, on board in a very sleek and modern package, then this is not a bad uh, choice at all. And it makes sense, again, for smaller businesses to consider. You can learn more details about this in our official written review, but for now, this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This was our video first look and review of the eMeet M1.